Hi folks, all my friends on YouTube, this is Don Schaefer with you. I'm part of the Better You Enterprises, and we have a, a series that we're teaching here called Personal Transformation. And I want to welcome you. You know, it's great that you're tuning in. I know last time we had gotten together in our last tape, we talked about, well, I want to back up a little bit. You know, the thing that we're working with and what we believe wholeheartedly is the fact that we were all created as a hardware and uh, God has made us like a computer, the basic hardware brought into this world, but it has to be programmed. And uh, it's interesting, you know, um, from young on, we were a clean slate, but we learned everything from young on. Children, by the age of one or two, know how to talk. And what was really interesting is um, families that are bilingual, that know how to speak Spanish as well as maybe English, and um, they will speak this around their child. By the child, time the child is one or two, it will know either, both English as well as Spanish what it means. So we can be programmed in many ways. And a lot of times we're not programmed correctly. And that's what this program is all about. We're trying to give upgrades. It's like a software upgrade in your thinking to have you look at things in a different way. And I know the last time we had gotten together, we talked about... Um, it was called the plan and it was 2.17 which was the upgrade it talked about how God has, has a plan for each and every one of us how wonderfully each and every one of us including you is made and how God designed everything so exactly how you look uh, your whole everything about you was part of a plan you know a lot of times we get involved in this world where we think that we're not correct that there's something wrong well according to the bible god had planned for all of us so everything and the bible also said everything he created is good so god don't make mistakes so there's a reason for each and every one of us and uh, we're all fitting into a plan and as soon as we realize that we find the purpose that god has given us and we're all part of what god has planned for us at this day and age this very date, God had a plan. He even had a plan for you to be watching this, which is beautiful. You know, a plan for me to be doing this, which is also beautiful. But today, we're going to be talking about the wandering 2.18. And I start with the scripture in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice unto him, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might be able to prove that perfect, good, and acceptable will of God for you. And the scripture is powerful because Paul, a long time ago, a couple thousand years ago, had the insight to realize that it was all about getting to know God and allowing this mind of ours, which is being programmed by a world around us, needs to be transformed. It needs to be connected with God in a way where we start to see things differently. And that's the beauty of what God is wanting to do in our lives. He's created us as the hardware. What we have to do sometimes is we need to reboot. And uh, hopefully what we're talking about here will help in that root reboot. But I'm calling it the wandering 2.18. And a little quote here says, the man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder, a homeless and nothing, a no man. And that's where, yeah, if we do not have a purpose for what we're doing in life, we could float anywhere. And that's where ships that leave a port, if they didn't have a rudder, they could end up anywhere in the world. But once we connect, once we get programmed to connect, we have direction. And that's where we're calling this the wandering 2.18. And that's where many people find themselves just wandering in life. You know, everyone not see, seeking God will find themselves just wandering. I know you go back to the story of Cain and Abel. When Cain uh, killed Abel, God said, I will make you a wanderer, a vagabond. You know, you'll be walking this earth wandering. And the sad thing is, everybody on earth is a wanderer until we get connected with God. We're walking aimlessly. We're going after projects, doing stuff, whatever it might be. It's all part of the wandering process. And there's a lot of elements in it that uh, can hinder us 
in this wandering until we get connected. We will have, have a driving force leading and directing us, not knowing our future and what to expect. You know, and that's where a lot of people, until they come to God, until they realize the importance of God, they have no clue as to why they're here or what to expect as far as the future is concerned. They're just hoping that because they're part of the masses, that they will, you know, you know, someday just be part of the masses. Well, the Bible says we're more than that. God has a specific purpose and a specific reason for us. He doesn't want us wandering anymore. And hopefully we can get some insight on that. Spending all their lives running from something, running from guilt and trying to hide shame, always being haunted by the past memories, finding themselves unconsciously punishing themselves. And that's These are all signs of wandering. You know, my past, the things I've done in my past, I've always got this, or the guilt and the shame, I'm always dealing with this sort of thing. You know, going on and on, you know, memories, and stuff that I've done punishing myself, you know, not keeping my, not really trying to build myself. But you know what? We punish ourselves sometimes for the wrongs we've done. God says we just need to be forgiven. We need to get into a place, and that's the beauty of God. We can start brand new. That's where we're born again. That's brand new. That's starting in a new state of mind. I know if you get into the Bible, you find that Paul was a murderer. He was busy killing Christians at that time until he hooked up with God, completely turned him around. He's one of the, how would you say, the most powerful individuals outside of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. This was Paul walking in the letters he's given, and he's still speaking to all of our hearts because he was programming back then. His letters were a programming tool, and that's where this is too. This this particular class is a programming tool. It helps us to think in a different way. We don't sit, have to sit there and dwell on our pasts and the wrongs because all of us has it. The Bible says everyone's a sinner. Everyone has done something wrong, something to be ashamed of or whatever it might be, but we can get past all that. God wants us to, and in a life seeking after him, he will lead us out of that so we don't have to wander anymore. I know even in the, um, the wilderness, you know, the Israelites, because they doubted God, they wandered for 40 years in a wilderness until they could enter into the promised land. God has a promised land for each and every one of us. And a lot of times we spend our whole lifetime wandering around because we don't have the belief and the desire to seek after Jesus Christ in our life. Okay, some are wanderers in resentment and anger, holding on to hurts and not letting them go or getting over them, easily offended and wanting to hold a grudge, not knowing that they are only hurting themselves with bitterness. And that's where some people are. You know, I just, I want to speak out in different areas, but some people are. It's, it's anger and bitterness. Somebody has done something wrong to me, so I am going to be bitter. You know, and a lot of times when we're angry and bitter and we do certain things, we realize we're hurting no one but ourselves, because the person that did it probably don't even realize they did it to us. And it's a hard life to live. God wants to get us past that, being easily offended by the things that happen around you. Because it, sometimes it's hard even walking out of the doors of your house in the morning, because you're just setting yourself up for something to happen, and it could wreck your whole day. God wants to get us past all that. He wants to, because these are signs of wanderers, not being directed by God. God gets us to the place where I know who I am. I know I might have faults and this and that, but he's going to take care of all that. I don't have to worry. I don't have to carry a grudge. Somebody does something wrong for me, I will pray for them. You know, uh, like I've told my grandson one time, people were doing wrong things to him at school. I said, they have the issue. You have a choice to make. Either you can let them keep their issue or you can take on the issue for yourself. And he says to me, probably a lot easier letting them keep their, uh, their issues. And I said, yes, it is. So when people do you wrong, that's what you need to ask yourself. Am I going to take this on? Am I going to get angry and bitter <clears throat> and let it ruin my life? <clears throat> Excuse me. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let them keep their issue. I'm going to move on. And if they need prayer, I'll pray for them. Some are living a life full of fear having developed a fear from a traumatic experience or something that happened in their life, missing so much opportunity because of fear, holding them back, finding themselves imprisoned in their own minds. You know, a lot of times there are bad things that do happen, Tra traumatic th type things. And, or people will say, oh, you don't want to do this, Don. You know, this might hurt and this might not work out too well. But, you know, we have to get to the place at, as a non-wanderer where I'm, I'm confident 
I'm confident that God will take care of every situation. I don't have to worry about this and that. Fact is, the Bible says we cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. So whatever our situation is, and I've done that many times in my life where things have come up and I said, Lord, it isn't, I'm not going to take this problem today. Today, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to let you take care of it. I remember when my children were young. You know, and they would go out at nighttime and I would sit there and say, am I going to lay awake all night and worry about my kids? And I, I would say, no, Lord, I tell you what, Lord, they're your kids too. I tell you what, I'm going to go fall asleep. I will let you take care of whatever the sit situation was. Never anything happened, but that's the way I used to handle life because I did not want to sit there living in worry and fear because it's crippling in a person's life. And some are caught up in living in materialism having no goals in life, becoming fat with stuff. Yeah, always feeling that more will make them happy, not knowing that most important things in life are not things. And that's, we live in a very materialistic society right now. And a lot of people, they, they're wandering around just getting fat with stuff. They just keep adding stuff to their life. I, I can't imagine, because I know I, I read books and stuff from years ago. And I, I, sometimes I talk about that. You know, when some of this stuff was written in the Bible, they maybe had a tent, they had maybe a camel outside, but they didn't have a whole lot more. Maybe they had a candle to light up at nighttime for light, but they didn't have a whole lot more. Maybe they had a scroll or, or a piece of parchment with something written on it, but today, we have tons of stuff. And a lot of times wanderers will just get caught up in stuff with no direction in their life, not really going any place and wondering what's going on here. You know, I, if I don't feel good today, well, maybe I'll go buy something or maybe I'll just influence my life that way. See, this is all signs of just wandering through life, just trying to ease the pain. Some will get themselves involved in reading novels, you know, I've known people that will continually read novels, trying to place themselves in the role of the character inside of a book so they can escape the reality of their life because they're just wandering. They're just wandering around really with no goals, no, no uh, objectives. They just be hoping that everything goes well. And then they want to live forever. You know, they get, they reach, you know, 70, 60, 80, 90, whatever it is. They want to extend their life. They want to be youthful. They want to hang on to everything. And I'm saying, for what? You know, if you find the purpose of God and finding out what God wants and the direction he has you in, you start to realize whatever it is in your life, whatever happens to you, it's his business. You know, I know someday I'm going to be with him for eternity. It's his business. You know, I can have peace in my heart realizing I'm not wandering anymore. I'm not allowing all this stuff to get me off in different directions because I want to have peace in my life. I want to have love in my life. I want to be able to enjoy everything that's here, but having the hope of something even better beyond this. You know, so I'm not sitting there trying to preserve anything. I'm not worried about someone coming up and taking me out tomorrow or whatever it might be. You know, I don't want that to happen. Don't get me wrong. But if it does happen, it happens. You know, I want to be at peace with God, my creator, the one who made me. I know a lot of people talk about their goals and what, what they want in life and where they're going after. And I always tell them, I said, you could be seeking totally the wrong thing. You see, the thing we need to do is the creator made us and designed us. We always have to go back to the designer to find out how we're supposed to operate and what we're supposed to do. You know, we don't go, if we have a, a shovel and, it's, and for digging dirt, we don't go to a, um, what, automotive shop or something like that to try to figure out what that shovel's all about. No, we, we get into a shovel manufacturing, find the engineer, and find out what his design and his, his thought process was. That's a simple example of how that's supposed to operate. And that's where our lives is the same thing. We need to go back to the source of what God has designed us for. And when we can do that, then we can say, you know what? I know, I know exactly why he made me the way he did, the skills he gave me, the abilities he gave me. I know all this sort of thing because I talked to the engineer that engineered it all. You know, I know this stuff. See, I'm not going to be wandering around trying this and this and that and whatever it might be, just trying to uh, make myself happy for the period of time that I'm living here on earth. See, I want more than that. I want to be able to fulfill 
the design process. I want to be connected with him and someday be with him for eternity as the Bible would talk about. See, knowing your purpose in God will stop the wandering. Yeah, we, we'll be seeking God rather than just pleasing ourselves and others. I'm trying to please the source, my creator, not what others think not what myself desires, but what he wants of me. We'll know my purpose in life and we'll not let peer pressure become an issue, becoming unstoppable. That's what I've always told people. Once you connect with God, you become unstoppable because all the angels of the heavens, everything that God would have to help you be what you were meant to do in life is going to be at your fingertips. You know, the Bible tells us that we come on to him and he will give us rest from our labors. Wandering is very labor intense. The rest is coming into a place where you have come into an understanding of what God has designed for you. And then there's great peace in life. This is it, Lord. I know I have found that which I've been looking for. I know when Jesus first came on the scene, that was the word that was saying, we found that which the prophets of old and everybody was looking for, Jesus of Nazareth. Well, right now, in our lives right now, what we need to find that which we are looking for, that which is going to stop all of our wandering, stop all of our useless and fruitless uh, living in this world. And we will know our purpose in life. You know, and that's where becoming separate from the crowd, not walking off the bridge of destruction, yeah, the crowd has a way of going, and it's all about pleasing themselves, and um, you know, and leads to an area. The Bible talks about destruction, but He gives us a pathway leading to eternal life, and we'll get ourselves out of a crowd of wanderers that are just wandering around in life with all kinds of issues and problems and attitudes and ways and needs and unhappiness and whatever it might be, trying to fill themselves with this and that. And this and that and all that just to appease themselves for the wandering time that they're here on earth god is wanting to stop that wandering he's wanting to give us purpose in life focus in life understanding in life wisdom in life giving us everything that we need to live life to glorify him to be able to say well done engineer well done creator well done one that designed every part of this world for 2023 that we're living in right now that we realize everything was designed for a moment just like this even this class which is good and the greatest tragedy is not death but wandering through life without knowing your god and your purpose without god life has no purpose without purpose life has no meaning today is the day to make a conscious effort to stop the wandering god wants all of us to be at home with him. He wants us to stop the wandering. He wants us to plug into him, to realize it's all about him. Whatever the issues are in life, he wants to take care of them. So many times people will say, I will try to fix myself. I will try to get myself the way it needs to be and the way I need to operate. God wants his hands on you. He wants to be able to do this for you and that's where we need to come to a place and realize it's all him. We need Jesus Christ in our life. And I want to thank you for being with me, all my YouTube friends. And you have yourself a very constructive and programming good week. Thank you so much.